Assisted Living Down Under Australia. I'm doing this video today uh, to answer a question on one of our viewers who was wanting to know about the Chandler and me um, and how it goes doing large batches in relation to what temperature does it get up to because uh, the Chandler and me you're not able to um, control the temperature in the sense that you can't turn the temperature up or down or set it to a particular uh, temperature what you can do is you can use number two which is the large um, setting so if you're doing a large batch you would use number two or if you want high heat then you would do number three now the issue or the question that she had was what temperature does it actually get up to uh, so that's what we're doing today this first one is we're doing a large batch now with the large batch we need to slowly feed in the flakes so that we can get it right up to the one litre mark. Uh, so I'm not there yet. Looking at it now I am about 900. So we're just going to add a little bit more in. Okay, a bit of a stir so it can melt down. So we're still not there at the one litre. Uh, what I did notice previously with the one litre is that I got more frosting um, and the combination of the colour, the binding of the colours, it didn't work out as well as when I do a smaller batch. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the thermometer and once we get to the final product, uh, I'm going to use that thermometer to tell you what temperature it's at basically. So hopefully that will allow you to figure out what temperature it will get to when it's on number two setting, which is the large batch. Um, and then I'm going to do another video, which is number three, which is the high heat batch. And we'll test how hot it actually gets. Because as you would know, if you make candles regularly, then if you're doing certain types of waxes, they need a higher heat. So today we're using a 464. Now I'm thinking that that's probably going to get us up to the litre. Alright, so give it another bit of a stir, just so it doesn't set in one giant lump. Uh, now I found that when you're doing the large batch, you do have to do this. Try not to get it down too close to the um, device that's turning the wax. So I'm really just mixing on the top here. Alright, so I'm just going to show you, we'll move the camera up. So this is what it looks like at the moment. It really looks like chicken sweet corn soup, if you ask me. Um, <laughs> but it will clear up and go super clear once all the wax is melted. Okay. Now this is the first time I'm recording in my new location. So we're still setting up and getting things worked out. Uh, but I was missing making candles and I was missing making content for you. Uh, so this is just a makeshift solution until we get our final uh, stuff that arrives. Okay, so this is my thermometer. This is my Chandler and me thermometer. Okay, so I'm going to use this to manage my temperature. All right. It comes with a little guide on how to use it. Comes all wrapped in bubble wrap like this. Okay, and we've got a few different settings here on the device. Okay, so we're going to be using this one, all right? I'll just wait a little bit longer for this. I'm just going to show you this little baby in action. So basically what you do is Pull the trigger, turns it on, and then if you can see on the side here, when I point at the liquid, it gives me a laser while I hold down. Then I release and it'll tell me what the temperature is. So there you go. So we're aiming for about 65. I would normally, if I was making it without the Chandler and me. So we'll see what this gets up to when it tells me that I need to add the fragrance. Now I just need to add just a little bit more wax in because as you can see it's not quite at the one litre mark yet. I think that should get us there. Let's 
see what the temperature is at now. It hasn't quite gone to the next stage, which is adding the fragrance. But let's have a look and see what it's... Sixty-seven degrees. Okay, so we're getting to sixty-seven degrees, and let's see. It should start beeping at me soon, I would imagine. It's beeping at us now. It wants to tell us what we need to do next. So we'll turn this on. We're going to point it into the liquid. And it's giving us 68.8, so almost 69. And that's when it's telling us to put the fragrance in. Now that's the surface temperature, so I imagine that down the bottom the temperature will be slightly higher. Okay, we'll add our fragrance in. And then we'll move on to the next stage and we'll see what it is at the end. We've finished now. It's beeping, it's at the third, it's ready for the pour. So we're just going to test what temperature it's at because it is quite a large batch. You can see it's right at the right at the top. And it's saying it's 59. Okay, so that's what you're going to get. Um, I would prefer it to be a little hotter than that for my pour temperature. Um, so now you know what temperature it will be at. Um, for a large batch, we're just going to make sure that that was the correct reading. Yeah, so it's almost at 60. Okay, um, so if you're using the large batch, which is what I've done today, once you get to your final product and it starts beeping at you to tell you to pour, it's going to be, well, it's at 59.9, so pretty much 60 degrees um, for the pour. Normally, I like to have it at at least 62 for the pour. I find that that um, stops the frosting. So we're going to go ahead and pour. I am going to be doing some clear glass um, candles like this because I plan to do some rainbow candles. So we're just going to, I've got another one here, which I'm using a jam jar that we have here in Australia. Um, it's a really pretty jar. And I've used it about six or seven times now and it's never cracked or, and I've never had any issues there. Um, so that's always good. And we've got this one here. And then just move it slightly away for you. And down. We've got a little tin here. So uh, my mother-in-law is going to be going over to the Philippines soon to live. And I'm going to be sending a heap of these over. Um, along with a heap of tea light candles um, and they're going to stay in the Philippines so that any Philippine supporters um, who might win prizes uh, or you know been very supportive and things like that I'll be sending candles from the Philippines this way it'll save on postage uh, and you will get them quicker so that's what I'm going to be doing okay that's a really really big batch so I think I'm going to have to do it this way. Oh, it's so heavy. Okay, so that's that one. Let's do a few of these little tea lights. These are super cute. I don't want to fill these all the way. Some of them I'm going to do some decorations. So I also just wanted to give you an idea on what one litre will fill. Okay. Now this one here I had to improvise because I haven't got any more of these little small wicks. So what I had was one of my dogs chewed up one of my candles. So I got one that has a relatively flat bottom and I just hollowed it out and stuck it in there. So obviously this is going to be one that I'm not sending over to the Philippines for obvious reasons. Um, but it just goes to show you can always improvise provided it's safe i 
Now the fragrance, you might ask, what fragrance am I using? The fragrance I'm using, because it's cold here, and I want it to feel like it's summer, I'm using my coconut and lime, which is my favorite, all time favorite, because it reminds me of summer. And who doesn't want to be reminded of summer? Okay, so we've got a couple more tea lights to go. And then it looks like I'm going to have to do up some more wicks because, oh. And there you have it. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope these tips will assist you in deciding whether you're going to buy the Chandler and me to help you make your candles. So have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and hopefully we'll see you soon.